Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our Week in Check-In video for Psych 45 Research Methods for Saturday, February 25th. Like I always do, just going to go over a few reminders, clarifications, anything I think you need to know to help stay on top of things in class. We cover most of these things while we're in lecture there, but just a reminder to help you stay on top of things. Uh, first up here is that uh, coming up next week there, we've got our quiz on Chapter 7, which is the Experimental Research Strategy. That's scheduled for Thursday on March 2nd, so be ready for that there. You've got your homework to help you prepare. And we have our discussion for uh, Chapter 7 due on Friday, March 3rd at 9 p.m. It's a pretty good discussion. It's about field studies, and you're going to watch one of those interesting videos from that ABC reality show, What Would You Do? It's a really cool video, one of the best they ever made, but it's also pretty unsettling in some ways. And also, as you'll see in my description, kind of laugh out loud funny and you'll have to watch it for yourself to uh, see what you think but it has to do with uh, uh, doing field studies which is a pretty important last part of that chapter uh, next up here as I've mentioned in lecture recently that you have your outline the second component of your APA style literature review paper coming up it's going to be due uh, Tuesday March 14th so you've still got some time there to get it ready uh, go to the APA literature review module which you'll find underneath unit 5 of our course materials so scroll down past unit 1 2 3 4 5 and there you'll see the dedicated APA literature review module look at the instructions for component 2 and the submission area for component two. And when you open up the instructions, just like you found for the first component of the paper, there's a little short how-to video where I walk you through in a show and tell way and kind of basically help you figure out what you need to do for the outline. So definitely watch that. It's about 10 minutes. And also you'll find they're very helpful for your outline. And I really want to stress this. Take a look at all the samples that I've put up there for you for an outline. I've kind of put up some really good samples and some that are not so good. So it's kind of the good, the bad, the ugly. Take a look at all of them so you can get a really good sense of what you need to do and what you should avoid in your outline. It really is helpful there. And uh, do incorporate any feedback that I provided for the first part of your uh, uh, for the first component of the paper. So some of you had some issues with either the caliber of your references or the formatting of them. So do remedy those things. The feedback I gave you, again, as I told you, don't take it as a personal attack. It's constructive feedback to help you remedy those things as easily as possible. So do fix those problems because, uh, again, most of them are easily fixed. And I don't want to see you get dinged for the same points, for the same errors that you could have easily uh, taken care of. So please uh, do that there. And do remember in this outline, you, you're going to start doing citations. Citations are parenthetical uh, remarks that you make to indicate that you're referring to a research article or some outside source when you make a statement in your outline. Now, you're not going to be writing the final paper in your outline, but you are going to be going to be putting together some information regarding your topic and some subtopics to kind of how you're going to approach it there. Look, look at the outlines and you'll see what I mean by that, the sample outlines, pardon me. And uh, you do need to cite every one of your 10 references at least one time. So make sure you keep that in mind because you're supposed to say something about every one of the sources you found because this is going to be a review of the literature and that means the, lit the literature means the references that you documented in your list of references so you need to say something about each one of them at least one time and be careful to avoid excessive quoting when you do your citations too uh, some quoting is okay but what I don't want to see is block after block of quotes without any writing because as you'll see in the instructions and if you end up doing this incorrectly I'll give you feedback that says quoting isn't writing so be careful to paraphrase Put things in your own words, but again, as I've told you in class, some quoting is totally cool, but just don't have a lot of it because that's not really the point of doing the outline there. And again, take a look at the samples and you'll see uh, uh, what I mean there. So, And also at the bottom of the instructions, just like you saw for the part one instructions there, you'll see what's called a rubric. A rubric basically is just a grading sync scheme. It's just going to show you how points will be earned and how points will be deducted there based on what you have or don't have correctly in your paper. So do take a look at that. Uh, it will really kind of give you a, some ideas about what you might want to have in your paper and what you might want to avoid. So it's kind of like a list of do's and don'ts, things you do want to have in your outline and things you don't want to have in your outline. So it really save you some headaches there. Our plan for next week is to finish up Chapter 7. We've got some really important things to do, and I've got some great videos to show you there, too. And uh, what we're going to pick up with on a Tuesday are how we control potential confounds. We've talked about the need to do that because it jeopardizes your internal validity, as you know. It generates all these alternate explanations, which you don't want. Because remember, you want that unambiguous explanation. But we haven't talked yet specifically about how do you do that. 
So there's three techniques we're going to cover when we get into class there on Tuesday. And then uh, on Thursday, we're going to cover some more related issues, but we're going to spend some time talking about control groups because uh, we've mentioned that control, one of the key characteristics of a true experiment is not the same as a control group. But nonetheless, some experiments do incorporate quote, quote, control groups or control conditions, we should say, but not all control conditions or groups are the same. And so it's important to know what the differences are. So we're going to go over that with some great examples. You'll really feel comfortable. We're also going to do some more practice on identifying IVs and DVs and, you know, control groups and everything. So it's really helpful to do that. It's got some great hands-on stuff for you to do next week. And uh, so really, uh, that's what we'll do. That's everything I wanted to say for this time. Uh, if you need anything in the meanwhile, reach out via email on Canvas, and I'll be glad to get back to you. Otherwise, I'll see you in class on Tuesday, and it was actually kind of enjoyable to do our remote live broadcast there into the classroom last time. It seemed to go pretty well and pretty smooth. You know, I could have used a better microphone from the classroom to hear what you all were saying, but uh, I'm surprised they don't have like a little special microphone for these, these kind of setups. But otherwise, it seemed to go pretty well, so I'm, I'm hoping that you didn't mind. And I'm planning on being there in person on Tuesday, as uh, long as the weather permits. They're showing more snow, but... Honestly, uh, we haven't gotten a lot of snow up here, just a lot of rain. I think it got warmer than they thought, So, uh, but you never know because if it ends up snowing, it's going to be a, a real impossibility for me to get down and get back home. So, all right, I'll see you next time. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye for now.